my name is Jonathan Courtois, and I'm a distinguished engineer at Sky. Sky is a British company originally. Uh, it's a media and broadcast company, so you probably not heard about Sky Sports, Sky News, uh, the broadcasting company, but they're also uh, doing set -up box and uh, now TVs. So we started in, I mean, we released in 2016 SkyQ. SkyQ was a satellite set -up box um, where it was the first time you had the ability to kind of record content, but also like um, pause live content so you can buffer and then you can come back later and you can watch all your recordings for a very long time. It was a very great product and it was the first time we, we used Qt uh, for our software development on the set-top box. And then in 2019, uh, we started Skyglass. So we used the same code base, but now this time for an IP product. Uh, so Skyglass was a TV that was built by Sky and Comcast together, Comcast being our um, the company that bought Sky in 2018, and then we released that product in 2021. Uh, main challenges are usually performance, right, because um, there could be a lot of content for um, customers to browse, uh, movies to watch, you know, sports and stuff, so the, um, the performance is quite critical, so you can browse content at, at a fast pace. Um, memory consumption is also another one, um, because you can have multiple apps running at the same time on a set of box on a TV, you might be able to want to switch between Spotify, Netflix, or native content in Sky. So these are kind of the main challenges you need to face. The um, speed is quite important, and because we chose C++ quite early on, uh, it's an embedded device working on Linux, so C++ was a good choice. Um, Qt kind of helped um, solving all these speed and, and memory issues. We actually compared it with other framework like uh, Java, Android, or even JavaScript, but the performance was just not there. Like I mentioned, we were bought by um, Comcast in 2018, and they come with a different model uh, compared to what Sky used to do. So Sky used to be a European company uh, operating in Italy, Germany, and in the UK. So the Sky, Sky was looking at its own market. But with Comcast, they have a different approach, which is more like a syndication approach, where they try to create a product that is great, and then they try to syndicate it and try to sell it to as many companies as they can. So that's kind of a shift for us where we used to be really a Sky product and now we have to see it. How can we bring this product in competition with the like of Android TV or you know, Google TV and, and compete with you know, Samsung, LG and, and, and the big in the operating system of, of TV than set the box. So that's, that's probably the challenge that we're gonna face uh, in the next few years. Yeah, so it's an interesting question. I mean, for me, individual contributor is not really a manager or management role. Like I mentioned in my speech, there's kind of a crossroad when you become a senior developer and you've done that for quite a long time to choose do you want to become a manager and become a people leader or do you want to become an individual contributor and focus on the technical? If you do go down the path that uh, we call staff engineer path, I think the advice is are to um, continue learning, look at new technology, uh, always explore. I mean, the, the landscape of IT is changing massively now with, with generative AI and, and co. And it's important to always stay up to date. Also look at if you do want to grow, you're going to become a leader and you need to start acting as a leader. So it's always good to um, study about the past. Uh, what does that mean to be a leader? How can you help not only growing your own career, but how can you help growing people around you as well? Uh, so being a leader, being a mentor, uh, helping your team to grow would be probably my advice. And then from that, you're going to be recognized and, and hopefully your management will see that and help you get promoted. Tenure, well, tenure is a very long time. Unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball for that, but I think in a shorter time, I think obviously generative AI is going to help a lot also in the content creation. There is a, there's an interesting episode of Black Mirror where the whole content is generatively created on the fly and that's, that's quite impressive, but I think we're going to get to that at some point. For the home, I think we're going to have more augmented reality and virtual reality coming to the home, uh, especially in the sports industry, for example or you want to feel more close to the pitch, if you like football or cricket. So I think that's going to get cheaper and that's going to be more accessible to the, to the public. And for the home experience as a general, I think automation is going to become key as well. 
it is like I automated some part of my home, but I'm an engineer, so it's a bit easier. But I think it's going to get more and more accessible to the larger public that, you know, you get home through your car. The, the home is going to know that your car is about 10 minutes away. Your heating start. Um, you know, you might, your car might tell you what's on TV in 10 minutes if you want to start um, watching that as soon as you arrive and stuff like that, starting the, your favorite music and stuff like that. So I think the, the experience in the home is going to be much more practical and much more um, broad, like I said, with augmented reality and all of them. So.